tell me like a little bit about uh, you know melon and how it came to be and why you wanted to like really get in the hat industry. So I don't know if you've seen any pictures of me personally, but I'm uh, I'm 29 years old, about to go bald already. So I came from a long line of balding Irishmen, and I've pretty much just been a hat nut my whole life. I almost sleep in a hat, man. Like ever since I was a kid playing baseball. It just became a part of my wardrobe, and as I kind of grew older and got more successful, I started looking for ways to step up my hat game, and uh, baseball-style hats were, you know, my, my forte. I know there's plenty of, you know, nicer designer hats for the other styles and headwear, but for baseball hats, I couldn't really find anything to step up my headwear game, so uh, I, had a, I had a background in apparel. I've been into clothing my whole life. I went to the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising and got a degree in apparel manufacturing. So it just made sense with my experience in the industry with, you know, the contacts for sourcing, etc. that I could just um, work on doing my own version of the, of the world's best hats. And so I kind of had this idea for a few years back in 05, 06, and I clicked up with my current partner, uh, Corey Roth, back in college 12 years ago. We were both just like-minded, entrepreneurial, go-getter kind of guys. And uh, when I brought the idea up to Corey, he loved it and said, dude, let's go. So we started putting pencil to paper, teamed up, and uh, started sourcing the craziest fabrics. Took a lot of inspiration from Rolex, um, Louis Vuitton, uh, even Nixon watches. And just basically tried to create headwear that had as much detail as the current sneakerhead shoes. We we're both sneakerheads too, so it just made sense. And uh, with the, all the movement in Apple products and the packaging and just that prestige that comes with Apple branding, we really liked the way they put their products together. So we created our own app, travel box that, that our, our products are packaged in. And... Uh, it kind of all was solidified when we're looking at the guys like Kanye and Justin Timberlake. These guys are rocking $300 limited edition shoes, $400 jeans, you know, $50,000 watches and $100,000 chains. And then they'd always be rocking a $25, $30 baseball hat. <laughs> and it just, didn't, it just didn't make sense to us, you know? Yeah. So we decided to give them a premium option. Seeing the hat, you know, the first thing I thought was, you know, like luxury shoes and definitely with that box. I mean, that's another thing that would draw me in as a customer. I mean, because that box is just, I would just like that box in like on my office in display, you know, because that, that box really is pretty sick, you know. I'm so glad you looked. That was exactly the design. It was like you said, you're not really a hat guy, but a lot of people are. And we wanted something so classy that even if a non hat guy got melon hat as a gift he would still be like damn that's going on display in the office like what makes like i know you told me about like the the fabrics from all over the world what makes melon like different from other you know hat designers as far as like the work that's put into them and like the design yeah yeah so typically most of your baseball style hats are, an ex are, are they're either one of two things they're either a branded sports team hat from New Era, your 5950 fitted, you know? Uh -huh. Or they are a, they're just an extension of a clothing company. So like uh, your, your, what I would call your brands that started with t-shirts, like your, your Ruka, you know, Hurley, just all the, all of your uh, mainstream larger apparel companies have always treated the hat as an extension of a t-shirt or, or cut and sew fashion brand, no one really seems to ever focus strictly on just being a hat brand. Uh, other than the two or three that are out there, and um, we had, you know, Brixton came into the hat game 10 years ago, eight years ago, whatever it was, and really made a name for themselves by doing these dope fedoras. Yeah. And, and uh, kind of, for me, that was my first exposure to a company that really gave attention to detail to a hat specifically. Uh -huh. and, and so I had a ton of respect for them, collected a lot of their products, and then um, this 
decided when we did the melon half, rather than your standard like acrylic wool blend that you'll find in a new era or, or you know, the cotton blend that you'll find in other brands, we decided fabrics needed to really set the bar. So we sourced uh, fabrics from Laurel Piana out of Italy, which is pretty much the oldest and highest end cashmere manufacturing mill in the world. And uh, so the products you're going to see are going to have either Italian doe skin wool or Italian cash as the main um, fabrication. Then we took a lot of our inspiration from like the Rolls Royce interiors, the Ferrari interiors, the Lamborghini interiors, and found that there was a common um, usage of drum bag lamb napa leather, which is a very soft leather that's dyed all the way through so that if you ever get a scratch or a scuff in it, you know, the leather doesn't, it's not another color underneath. It's actually dyed all the way through. And so we found a, a really, really strong supplier of drum dyed lamb napa leathers and we have the leathers custom dyed to complement the whatever style it is of hat we're making. Yeah. So basically we call it like our Rolls Royce leather and our Italian cashmere is really what sets us apart on the fabric case on the materials. Then on the actual manufacturing of the melon hats, it, we really kind of take it a step further where, I don't know if you've ever bought a fitted hat where you know what size you are, but you have to try on two or three different ones just because they don't quite fit right. Uh-huh. And we found that that was simply um, for... The reason that's happening is, is the lack of checking each individual style in the quality control process. And so, being a smaller company that had the ability to do so, we pay a little extra when we manufacture our products to have each piece hand inspected with 32 different points for quality. And that way, we can ensure a more consistent fit, a more consistent product, and, and you know, we're going to obviously hold ourselves to a higher standard than your normal thirty dollar hat company when we're selling something for five or ten or fifteen times more money, we want to make sure it's five or ten or fifteen times um, more thought out and of, of higher quality. So so the actual manufacturing process if you if you notice in the mill in that travel box, each hat gets hand expect inspected at the end of the production line. And once it passes, it gets a melon chop which is a stamp that we do on our certificate of authenticity, then that certificate and that hat get loaded into the box. The box gets closed, packaged up with a bubble wrap, and then wrapped in a sleeve that has the style number of that piece on it and then loaded into a box. So it's basically just taking the time to ensure that every piece is on point and backing up the product with a lifetime warranty. It's literally just that kind of thing that that really sets us aside. There's a lot of other companies out there that are, you know, putting a really nice fabric on the bill of the hat or or tying up a really dope bill with a cool strap. And, you know, those guys are innovators in their own right just for stepping up the hat, you know, manufacturing process in that way. We really just looked at this more of a, like a contemporary designer, uh, couture almost kind of standpoint where, we brought in some of some of the best couture Italian um, dressmakers as our actual headwear cut and sew designers. Yeah, and, and took a little bit of a different approach. So we blended like my skate, surf, snow background, action sports background with Corey's sports background, and then took pulled from our resources at my college at the Fashion Institute and aligned ourselves with a few uh, graphic artists from the streets, so it's like this blend of contemporary meets street meets actual fashion. Oh, that that's that's awesome. I mean, that's like when we first started doing our, our limited edition line of t-shirts, that's exactly what we wanted to do, you know. We're not some kind of like uh, Hollister, you know, wearing guys. We, you know, we come from different backgrounds. Like I said, rally, we got skaters, we got BMXers. So, I mean, blending yeah. that with like the luxury fabrics, it's, it's just awesome. We're the kind of guys that would just put a BMX bike or our skateboards in like the front of a Lambo so, and just drive to the park. So, I mean... Bringing those two together is definitely, it's hard, but it's its pretty awesome. That's so dope, dude. I love that. I love that. 
Now, one of my favorite hats that you guys have, I think it's called uh, the campaign with that, that slogan right on the front, because we can. What is yeah. what does that mean, basically, because we can? I mean, I have the broad sense, but, like, what does that mean to you guys? Because, I mean, that's definitely a sick slogan, and if it wasn't trademark, I'd probably steal it from you guys. But that, that's that's definitely sick, man. Oh, uh, well, I appreciate it, man. I'm, that's my favorite question, for sure, when people ask what that means, because that slogan really came from, from deep within Corey and I and the whole team. And it started five years ago, man, when, when we started working on this, over and over and over, people were asking us, man, why are you dumping all your money into this hat thing, you know? Nobody's going to buy us a $300 hat. I don't know what makes you guys think you can make something that people are going to pay $300 for. And we kept explaining it, explaining it, explaining it, and it finally got to the point where we were sick of explaining it, and we just started saying, the, you know, people would say, why do you think you can create this? And we'd just say, man, because we can, man. Shut the fuck up, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it just, it just became this thing where, like, you know, you get the haters, and it was a good response to the haters when they want to come up and, and talk shit or run their mouth or try to poke holes in the plan or whatever. You just say, no, nah, man, we got to handle, bro. And it was a good little way to shrug them off with because we can, bitch, or whatever. Wow. So, so uh, it really became something that we kind of stand behind as a company to this day. And all there's only seven of us on the squad right now. And of every one of us, would rather die for the cause of building something that we all believe in, which is a premium category for headwear. And uh, anyone that's come on board and, and you know not really fully believed gets found out pretty quick and let go. So the squad here has kind of tried to align ourselves with positive thinkers, people that are open to innovation, and we welcome anyone's ideas at any time from 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 all over the place just because there is no such thing as a bad idea maybe just one that's more difficult to execute and so we uh we really just kind of shrug off the haters and move forward because we can't for sure <laughs> my mom hated that slogan at first she's like doesn't that she goes doesn't that seem arrogant and uh we all kind of shrugged, like, well, I, I guess a little bit. It's not meant to be arrogant. It's meant to just be definitive. Yeah. You know, a lot of people spend a lot of time describing something over and over, and you get sick of it. You just want to tell them that it's a done deal. Yeah, for sure. I understand that completely. Now, you guys said that you're, you got seven on the crew right now. Um, how, how's that go? Do you guys, like, I know we're a pretty tight-knit group as well. Do you guys, you know, you play well with each other, or do you uh, you get on each other's nerves? I mean, I saw that you guys were on tour, and you're basically, like, in a different city every day in, like, a tour bus. You know, is that, is it, like, fun all the time for you guys and business, or is it basically you guys are getting on each other's nerves? It's kind of hectic right now. You wish you could leave, or how's that going? Oh, dude, it's, uh... We call it the roller coaster tour, dude. It's one day we have huge accomplishments, or you know, open up a, a really quality retailer, and everyone's celebrating stoked. And then the next day, the electric goes out on the bus, and all the food spoils, and it's stinky, and the air conditioning's not working. Everyone's pissed off at each other. So it's definitely created a family type of atmosphere amongst us. The the uh, the vibes are always positive underneath. It's kind of like having a, like brothers with you when you travel. Like you all got love for each other no matter what, but you want to strangle each other at a certain point, too. You know? Yeah. And uh, we got our boy Rob back at the home offices that holds down all of the operational stuff for us. Which without him there, you know, we couldn't even afford to leave. Being that Corey, my other partner Mark, and I are all on the road, and. Uh, it's kind of like abandoning the castle. So we, we have our boy Rob there, who's been a homie since we were little kids. The guy has, like, all of our personal information to handle everything. He moves money around for us, ships stuff out, keeps us out of trouble. And and then we've got uh, our designers that crank out stuff nonstop. So the the goal is to get, get back from this tour with the top 50 sneaker boutiques in the world carrying melon 
and to officially finally open our headquarters where everyone can finally come work under one roof and we're going to kind of set that up like a not so much a bachelor pad but just a kind of like a man cave slash office where we're going to have a muay thai ring in the back for everyone to train their boxing we're going to have um, a really chill lounge with some fat TVs to watch football when the season comes through. Just make it like home because we all plan to live and breathe this for the next 10, 15 years, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you guys, it's it's weird hearing this because you guys have, like, one of the same exact plans we have. Like, um, we're all moving our headquarters to Orlando, and uh, we haven't decided if we're going to stay there or if we're going to move out to L.A., but, like, our plan is to create, like, a, a fantasy factory meets Hoonigan Racing type deal. Yes, yes, for sure. And you guys need to come move to Cali and move in next to us. Yeah, that, that'd be pretty sick. I, I definitely like that atmosphere. It's like a think tank, and it, it's great to see that you guys, you go, you know, you have the same mindset for that, and that you guys are all, like, really dedicated to the brand, and you want to see it grow, you know? Yeah, this is, I mean, everybody, every single one of us on the squad has dumped every bit of money, every bit of time after, like, blood, sweat, and tears. And all of our families and friends' money have, you know, scraped together five and ten grand of pop to put the vacuum behind this thing prior to our, our larger investor partners coming in. So this whole thing, like, this isn't just us wanting to win for our own personal greed. This is, you know, like, my aunt's 401k, my uncle's retirement, my, my parents' last bit of extra savings this is like i have to win this for for everyone you know yeah and that that definitely puts some pressure on you and you know the others 100 uh, percent. this is a uh, and, and every single like i said every single person's belief is 150 percent. there's no chance for failure there's never any discussion of what ifs there's this is go forward and cover every single base dot every eye and cross every t as often as possible and make the choice that's going to benefit everybody because it really comes down to everyone being in it to win it and there's there's no room for anything but that so we, we've got a great dynamic i'd love for you guys to come chill join us on tour for a day or two see how it goes down yeah that, that'd definitely be pretty sick I and mean, we're pretty booked but we're thinking about coming and doing like a california tour meeting up with all our friends checking out some spots you know to possibly move out there you know find a warehouse and stuff yeah, let me know. We got a lot of connects out this way, so we can set you up. I don't want to keep you too long, but uh, you know, last question for everybody: um, Where do you and like uh, Corey and the whole team? I know you said you wanted to see it go as far as you go, but um, like, where do you see you guys in in ten years? Like, what would be the perfect goal, and what kind of advice would you have for you know other young entrepreneurs? wanting to do the same thing, you know, not necessarily hats, but, you know, like overcoming all the obstacles that you guys went through and definitely starting your own brand and branding yourself as far as you guys have. I think to answer now, you know, everyone on the squad goal for the company is going to be to have made Melon a household designer premium brand name. Uh, we may at that point have grown from headwear into other categories, premium accessories, who knows, wallets, belts, shoes, sunglasses, watches, you never know where it could go. But um, on a personal side, I'd like to uh, eventually travel around to college campuses and educate young entrepreneurs on the how-tos to actually start a business to protect um, anything proprietary to whether you go LLC or corporation or... Uh, just kind of how to set up from from zero to year one in business, how to write the business plan that's actually bankable that people will invest in, and encourage, you know, young people starting their own thing. I think, you know, it's been said a million times, but I really do think that the school systems teach you a lot of different skills within um, a business, but it's very rare without an MBA program you actually get the insight on how to start and build your own company. We're, we're literally all about aligning ourselves with like-minded people and trying to bring up anybody else that we can that, that really is in it to win it and to, to play fair and play honest. We've encountered a lot of shady people along the way that we've had to cut loose and then we've tried to really, you know, pull in tight with the, with the homies that are actually ride or die kind of people. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we've done the same thing. We've got, you know, people coming in and going, but, you know, it's definitely those guys who are with you, like the, you know, the Drake song, the one he just came out with, you know, new, no new friends, you know, the guys who have been with yeah. you since day one are the guys, you know, you know, you might fight sometimes, but at the end of the day, you guys are all going to be sitting at the top together, you know, but yeah, man, I, I appreciate you taking the time to, you know, talk to us, you and Corey, it's definitely, you know, it's one thing, like, that's why I like doing these interviews, because, you know, I see the website and stuff like that, and you get, like, a, kind of like a bias towards you guys, and then, you know, I, I call you guys up, and it's definitely, like, totally different, you know, we find out we're, we're much more alike than, you know, I originally imagined, and, you know. I love that. That's good to hear, man. I, I think that the brand is being built to cater to a high-end clientele, and the people behind it are really what are going to service it and make sure everyone gets taken care of at the end of the day. So we're stoked to align ourselves with guys like you too, man. Yeah, well, appreciate it, man. You and uh, Corey take care, and it was uh, really nice meeting you guys, and hopefully we get to, you know, work together on something real soon. Sounds good, Ian. Thanks, man. Yeah.